even in this energy intensive sector of aviation, there are quick wins that we can have in our fight against climate change. Taking a step out of emissions, it's not a progressive curve, we can step down fast. The vision for Airlander is to be part of the future of zero emissions aviation. What we'd probably like to say was sort of the modern father of the modern airship, Roger Monk. In the 80s, 70s and 80s, he started to look at what would make an airship be successful and collected literally a list of things that were stopping the traditional airship being successful. That set of challenges was what drove him to eventually come up with the set of different concepts that come together in Airlander. You've got fixed wing aircraft, we've got helicopters, we've got airships, and now we've got hybrid aircraft. And the reason we think about it differently is because of that combination of true efficiency and the ability to move away from the heavy infrastructure that we currently use in ports and airports. Effectively what you've got with an aircraft that's using lifting gas is you're using physics to buy you some extra efficiency. So if you look at the shape of uh, Airlander, it's deliberately shaped like a wing. So we take off a bit like a traditional aircraft, fixed wing aircraft, except that we'll start generating lift at 10 or 12 miles an hour, and we'll take off at 30 miles an hour, at much, much lower speed. But although we're doing that, the whole weight of the aircraft is being supported for free with the helium. It's a new way of connecting, new way of doing things, and it sits in that big gap between slower surface transport and really fast, but carbon intensive aircraft. We think about use cases in logistics or surveillance, so flying for very long periods of time to protect people or things on the ground. And we think about the aircraft for mobility, for moving from place to place, like being on a really comfortable fast ferry that's a few thousand feet up in the air. So the key difference in the sort of experience between being an airlander and being on a fixed wing aircraft is just the environment that you're going to be in. You're going to have space around your seat. You'll have access to an aisle in every seat. Huge windows for you to see out of, and it'll be quiet and vibration free. We designed Airlander to be able to operate from any reasonably flat surface. The aircraft takes off and lands in about six times its own length. That means we can go and land on water, ice, marsh, desert, grass. It means we're not tied to operating to and from the runways that we've got today. And also when you can go away from the airfield, you can start to create really interesting connections. Like can you connect from ship out of the water over the shore directly to inland without having to go from ship to port, transship onto the road and then drive in? We've very, very much had to embrace risk management as a, as a whole feature of the business. And it's looking to try and make the biggest move in the shortest time for the smallest amount of money. Going forward, we've made our program resilient by making sure that we're going to build multiple aircraft in parallel. There'll be multiple aircraft in the test program at the same time. So you need resilience in your plan, you need resilience in your team to ensure that we actually deliver those aircraft on time. We expect Airlander to be coming into service from 2025. From there, it gets even more exciting. We have electric motors in development in partnership with the University of Nottingham and Collins Aerospace, supported by the Aerospace Technology Institute here in the UK. Those electric motors give us a path forward to zero emissions aviation before 2030. And, and all those things are, are just designed to help bring to life for people the reality and the possibilities that a project like Airlander can deliver.